Using a model vase that I created in the Love Modeling video, it's 20 inches high, so you can also use this model or any standard primitive to follow along. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to go to all four viewports. I'll press Alt W on the keyboard to do that. I'm just going to center the vase here in the middle of the perspective viewport. Now I'm going to go to rendering, rendering setup. I'll scroll right down to the bottom to assign renderer, and I'm going to assign a mental ray renderer here in production. Okay, just before we close the dialog, let's scroll up to output size and make sure we have custom width set to 640 and the height 480. That's ideal for this video. Now we're going to go over and create a background. So I'm going to go to the Create panel, a plane, and I'm going to draw out a plane here in the top viewport. Okay, let's go over to the Modify panel, and in the parameters I'm going to type in a length of 700, a width of 700, the segments I'm going to bring them back to 1, and the width segments also I'll bring that back to 1. Let's go over now and add a camera. So we're going to go to the Create panel, Camera, and we're going to select Target Camera. Again, we're going to go to the top viewport and drag out our target camera. Right click to come out of the camera creation mode. Now we can move our camera with the move tool. We can do that either in the left viewport or in the top viewport. Let's go over to the perspective viewport. Click on the word perspective and then from the menu select cameras, camera one. This is going to convert our perspective viewport into our camera view. So now when we move our camera, we can actually see what we're doing. OK, I'll try to leave each viewport so you can clearly see how the camera is positioned. OK, there's just one more thing to do. Let's go up to the camera view, click on the word camera, or we'll scroll right down to the bottom and click on show safe frames. There we are. Now you can see the exact size of our image when we render it out. So we better move our camera a little bit more. Let's just pull this back a wee bit more. There we are. When you're happy with it, we'll go over and add some lights. Let's go to the Create panel, Lights. Now behind Photometric, we're going to go to Standard Lights. Now here from the menu, we'll choose a Mental Ray Area Spotlight. Let's drag out our spotlight here on the top viewport, on the left-hand side of the camera. Right-click to come out of the Light Creator mode, and then with the Move tool, we can move the spotlight in the left viewport. We can drag it up, we can move it out a little, something like that. Now we'll go over to the Modify panel. Let's scroll down to the general parameters. Make sure we have our shadows turned on, ray traced shadows. Let's go to Intensity. The multiply will leave at 1. Here in Spotlight parameters, we'll just bring the fall off up. Let's drag the dial up. Bring it up to something like 90. The hotspot will also bring up Bring it up to about 55, 60. Up here in light cone, we'll turn on overshoot. OK, let's scroll down to advanced effects. Make sure we have diffuse and sprinkler turned on. Now we're going to go to shadow parameters. And that's all right there. Area light parameters. In type, we'll change rectangle to disk. We'll come back a bit later on and change the radius in the samples. These will soften our shadows, but it'll also take longer to render. So we'll do that near the end. OK, let's add another, another light. We'll go up to the Create panel, Lights, and we're going to select a Mental Ray Area of Noon. We'll also drop this in the top viewport, but this time on the right-hand side of the camera, right-click to turn off the Light Creator. And now we can just lift it here in the left viewport. Then we'll go over to the Modify panel. We're going to turn off Shadows. We'll go to the Intensity and the Multiply, we're going to bring it down to 0 0.3. We're going to go to Advanced Effects and we're going to turn off Specular. There we are. We're going to create a second Omni Light, so we'll just make a copy, hold the Shift key down and we're going to drag up our Omni. Here in the Clone Options, press Copy then OK. Now we're just going to place it right behind the model and right in front of the camera. Position it something like you see here in the left viewport. Then with your, when you're happy with it, we'll go over to the Modify panel. And we're going to scroll up, make sure we have no specular. We'll scroll up to the top. And we're going to change the multiplier here in intensity. We'll change that to 0 0.5. You can see it's a bit bright now in the background. So what we're going to do, we'll come over here to Exclude. Click on the Exclude button. And we're going to exclude the plane from their light. Click on Plane, the small arrow. 
and then the OK button. Now that the OmniLight will only shine on our model and not on the plane. Let's do a quick render. Oui, I've just rendered my left viewport. Let's go to the top and select the camera from the viewport menu, then press the lock icon. So now it will always render from the camera view. I'll just scroll down to the bottom and press render again. Here we are. You can see here it's fully lit in the scene. It looks really good. We've got a nice shine on our object. You see what I mean about the dark shadows? We can come back and, and we'll fix these later on. Let's just turn off our renderer for now. Everything's ready now so we can add some materials. Let's go over to the main toolbar and select the material editor or just press M on the keyboard. I'm using the slate material editor. We're going to use a composite map. So we'll just drag out the composite to view one. You notice we have another map already attached. It's a normal standard map. This is going to be our base map. Let's double click the composite map to open it. We'll change the name. Type in vase. Our base material is the one that's attached. Let's also double click to open that. And we're going to change the name to white. Now we're going to come over here to the diffuse. Click on the small none button. And we're going to scroll down to mental ray materials. And we're going to select an ambient occlusion map. Double click to open it. There we are. You can see that the ambient occlusion map has been attached to the standard map. Okay, let's go back into the white standard. Double click to make sure we're there. Now here in self illumination, type in 100. That's going to give it a nice glow. Okay, we'll go back over to the vase composite. We're going to go to the first material, click on the small none button. And now we're just going to scroll up and select the normal standard material. This is attached to another map. Now here in the material, double click to open it, we'll change the name to wire. Then we'll go to the diffuse color slot and we're going to select a very dark grey, then press OK. We'll come up here to the uh, basic parameters and turn on wire. And now in extended parameters, we'll just scroll down to where it says wire size and we're going to type in 0.8. I'm using a very small model, that's why I've changed the size of my wireframe. Otherwise, you'd leave the size set to 1. There we are. You can see our material, we've got a nice glow in it, and we've got our wireframe on the outside. So let's drag it over now to our, to our model. Let's create another material now for the ground. So we'll drag out a normal standard material. We'll double click to open it. Let's type in ground for a name. Now we'll scroll down to the small icon beside the fuse color. And here in the, the material browser, we're going to select an ambient occlusion map. There you can see it's been attached to the diffuse color. Let's double click to open the ambient occlusion map. Now here in bright, click on the small color slot and we'll bring the slider up. So we have a like a medium shade of gray, just halfway. That's fine like that. Later on, we're going to come back and change the samples. Now let's drag our material over to the plane. Let's close our material editor. Now we can go up to the main toolbar and click on the small rendering icon. It's going to take quite a while to render, so I'm going to turn the video off while it's rendering. Wow, brilliant. You can really see the topology on the model. That's very good. Let's go back and do a few tweaks, though. Let's drop down to the image precision in the final gathering dials. Let's boost both them up to medium. Let's close our renderer. Now we can come over to the top viewport and click on the spotlight. Here in the area light parameters, adjust the radius, we'll put it to 20. And in the samples, U and V, let's bring them up to 8. The higher we bring these dials up, the softer the shadows will be. Press M on the keyboard to open the material editor. Double click on the ground ambient occlusion map to open it. Now here in samples, let's type in 32. Let's just scroll up now to the white ambient occlusion map. We'll double click to open it. And in samples, we'll type in 50. The higher the samples are, the softer and clearer the image will be in the end. We'll just try this for now. Close the material editor. Let's go over to the main toolbar and select the renderer. While it's rendering, I'm going to turn the video off. Now we're back. Here we are. Beautiful. Beautiful topology. Soft shadows. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.